This video was made in partnership with Nubi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. These moments from film keep us up at night, and we want answers, damn it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 insane things movies just glazed over. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at scenes, moments, plot holes, and or inconsistencies that make you blink, scratch your head, and overanalyze, while the movie simply moves on without explanation. Not another word. Into the tub. <laughs> Number 10. Neo Shows No Mercy. The Matrix. Please remove any metallic items you're carrying, keys, boost change. Holy shit. <laughs> It sure sucks to be a security guard in the Matrix. On the one hand, the lobby shootout is a glorious extravaganza of gratuitous gunfu violence. Consider it from the other perspective, though. You're sitting back, reading the paper at work, when a gunman who believes the world isn't real riddles you and your buddies with bullets. A second shooter gunning down the last survivor. Morpheus does tell Neo that people who don't know about the Matrix are enemies. Something also true of people whose bodies are taken over by agents. But couldn't Neo and the rest invest in some tranquilizers or tasers or something? The seemingly necessary casualties in this film and its sequels are through the roof. Number 9. There are at least 50 other Tom Cruise clones. Oblivion. Welcome home, Jack. In Oblivion, Tom Cruise's character Jack Harper discovers he's a clone. In fact, there are dozens of Jack Harpers, some still in storage, others on Earth, unaware of the other Jacks. Jack number 49 blows himself up, and Jack 52 shacks up with the original Jack's wife, making him the third Jack to do so. This leaves a lot of unanswered questions. Inexplicably, the clones have original Jack's memories, but have also lived different experiences. An even bigger question is, what about the 50 or more other Jacks on Earth still living a lie? What if some of them remember Julia and come knocking on her door? That's gonna be an awkward reunion. Number 8. What did Beast do to his servants? Beauty and the Beast. I didn't mean any harm. Do you realize what you could have done? Hey, stop! The curse that transforms the prince into a beast also changes his servants into household objects. Heck, even the dishes, beer steins, and spoons are alive. So what are we meant to make of the smashed furniture in the Forbidden West Wing? The Beast's bedroom in particular is a complete mess. Are these the remains of murdered servants? Of course, just because all the Beast's servants are household objects doesn't mean that everything inanimate is really a servant. But since most of the objects we've seen so far are people, and the Beast is an animalistic rage machine, the possibility is admittedly disturbing. Get <laughs> Number 7. Lucius Malfoy Tries to Hurt Harry in Public Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets Dobby? Master has given Dobby a sock. What? I didn't... You'd think he'd know better, but when Lucius Malfoy is tricked into freeing his house elf Dobby, he turns his wand on 12-year-old Harry Potter. The spell Lucius begins sounds a lot like the killing curse of Vada Kedavra, punishable with a life sentence in Azkaban. <laughs> It's not only uncharacteristically stupid, it must surely result in serious consequences, especially since Harry has a witness in Dobby. After all, what kind of school would let someone try to murder a student on school grounds? Probably the same school that'd keep a vicious three-headed dog in the castle and a whomping willow on the grounds. Move! <laughs> Number 6. An escaped psycho convict is still loose. Con Air. The last scene of Con Air reveals that insane serial killer Garland Green is now living free, having evaded the authorities. Nicknamed the Marietta Mangler, he butchered over 35 people before his capture. We're supposed to think he's rehabilitated, because in an earlier scene, he meets a little girl that he decides to not brutally murder. Pat on the back for you, Garland. But knowing he once wore a girl's head as a hat, it's hard to find his rehabilitation really convincing. That final shot is sort of like watching John Wayne Gacy walk off into the sunset. 
and wondering what will happen next. Number five, robots must be facilitating human reproduction. Wally. Well, then what do you want to do? I don't know. Something. Wow. Behold our glorious future. After our species ruins Earth, we turn into junk-guzzling, trend-obsessed blob people fixated on consumption and social media. It takes one plucky garbage compactor to wake us up to our surroundings. But in the meantime, how do humans reproduce? Since our muscles have atrophied and we're consigned to floating chairs, do robot assistants just mush us on top of each other? Or are our genetic dribs and drabs just sucked out and intermingled in vats? You know, we honestly wish we hadn't tried to imagine either prospect. Number four, Elsa creates intelligent life. Frozen. Can't hold you back anymore. We might be overthinking this, but how does Elsa's ability to freeze water translate into the creation of sentient conscious beings? While wrathful minion Marshmallow doesn't seem too bright, Olaf the snowman is clearly a living thing. Sure, we understand Elsa can use her cryokinetic powers to build an ice castle and freeze over a lake, but how does frozen water make Olaf tick? Does he have an ice brain? Or is his mind an immaterial substance independent of his physical properties? We know it's a Disney movie, but we can't help but wonder, is Elsa effectively a god? Number three, Captain America would have confronted Red Skull. Avengers Endgame. How long is this gonna take? Discovering that S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are, quote, sweeping every wirelessly accessible camera on the planet from Agent Phil Coulson in the Avengers was certainly creepily prophetic and ethically ambiguous. We're sweeping every wirelessly accessible camera on the planet. Cell phones, laptops. But what about when Steve Rogers returns all the Infinity Stones to the timelines from which they came? While we've seen enough sci-fi flicks to know that we have to suspend our disbelief with time travel, it is strange that the fact that Captain America would have had to give back the Soul Stone to Red Skull wasn't even brought up at all. Directors Anthony and Joe Russo would later confirm such an encounter with the press, and yet Endgame doesn't address how monumental and possibly life-changing a reunion between these two arch nemeses would have been. Well, that's right. Put the stones back, I thought. Maybe I'll try some of that life Tony was telling me to get. Number two, what did the Ewoks do with the defeated stormtroopers? Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. Nice work. <coughs> Great, Chewie. <coughs> the Ewoks are adorable walking teddy bears who cook and eat human prisoners. These huggable, murderous aliens are on the verge of roasting our intrepid adventurers when Luke fools them into thinking C-3PO is a god. But at the Ewok celebration, stormtrooper helmets being used as drums raise uncomfortable questions. When the Ewoks stripped the stormtrooper corpses, what did they do with the bodies? After missing out on smoked Han, were stormtrooper steaks the next best thing? If you're ever at an Ewok victory feast, well, maybe bring a sandwich from home. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. There's been a change of plan. 82201, it's Michael Myers. Babysitter Murders, 1978. 40 years to this day. Michael Myers loose with a bunch of nut bags in Haddonfield on Halloween night? Well, I guess you don't know everything about women yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry about all this, Drew. It's all right, little brother. For a nincompoop, you're not half bad. <laughs> Come along, children. Bedtime. But we're not a <gasps> bit sleepy. We want to go for a walk in the park. Dad, can we? Better do as your mother says. Not quite at the end yet. 
almost there though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, San Francisco destroyed. Star Trek Into Darkness. Movies set in the far future often featured the destruction of cities, planets, even whole star systems. But it's seldom a place we know. In disaster movies, on the other hand, familiar landmarks are reduced to rubble with apocalyptic abandon, which is of course the whole point. The world we know is being wiped out. Star Trek Into Darkness has a bit of both. Khan crashes the vengeance into a future San Francisco, killing untold thousands. The death toll must be massive, with mourning across the nation. But it's never really addressed, besides a brief mention in Kirk's speech about honoring our dead when he rechristens the USS Enterprise. Sucks to be an extra in a Star Trek movie. We are here today to rechristen the USS Enterprise and to honor those who lost their lives nearly one year ago. This video was made in partnership with Nubi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.